Mother! 
in what the God category you find yourself. I think that we can all attest to the fact that there is life for the one that was living. Not just for ourselves alone, but for so many other persons. Today, the Lord has united the church family of our sincere condolences to the members of the bereaved family. And we know, and we pray and we trust that God will give you the strength to endure in this great moment of loss. Let us therefore hear tributes on behalf of our sister departed as they come to us in the following order. That I am a man of the spiritual community. Then we have Raymond Grant, the Edward community, Coach Daddy and Ben Peter Tony Bijan. And then we finally have one, the Harry. So we take the tributes in that order. Thank you. Over the years, 
she would give it to everybody. Everybody. She knew how to temper justice with mercy. And in scary woman she was because you know she was very classy and sophisticated. She knew how to dress. A man could she dress. She would share photos about her family and always tell our conversation with me love you here, that you tell them that you say me love them. Well, you tell them that I love them and I love everybody. We knew she meant it and they were more than just words spoken. I remember in August 2021, she came to Jamaica and she spent the time at our home. The memory of it still fresh in my mind and the fire will be etched During her speech, she ran some serious jokes, very serious jokes, about how she was my father's side chick. And we would start to laugh and she would say, I'm too nice to be with me, I'm being side chick in other times. You know, I watched her and I said, boy, you're a befitting side chick, you know. She was always looking banging when she got dressed, fat or slim. She was always running ready. I found this so because when you love somebody, you see beyond the physical, you see beyond how they look, because you're so filled with love for the individual, that doesn't matter how they look, they will always look good to you. Miss B, her children and her sister, I would say her children and her sister showed her that she was special and important to them. I watched their interaction when she was at our home and when they came to visit her, how they would play, you know, run the jokes them and how they talk and how they share each other. So you could know that her children and her sister, they loved her. Today, while we as family and friends come to terms about her departure from this world, I hope she will inspire us to truth, be truthful to each other, to love each other unconditionally, others shortcomings and flaws and express each day to those who we hear our appreciation and love for them to our siblings children grandchildren and great grandchildren let the cards of her love continue to bind you all together do not let go of each other because you are her legacy goodbye to those who fall in love with their eyes because those who love the heart and soul, there is no separation. To my terrible mother, I will miss you immensely. My parents will miss you terribly. And I know that things will never truly be the same. Because you are no longer here physically, our hearts are broken. But the Christian in me reminds me that God is close to the broken heart. And he will save those who are crushed in spirit. My dearest, walk well. Stay safely in our sins, Amen. And let his perpetual light continue to light your heart until we meet again by the beautiful door. Love you.
Thank you. 
She was the life of any party anywhere she went. She was, however, a very firm businesswoman and never mixed business with pleasure. The story is told that one night she was in her business place and a young man came in and thought she was quite attractive and he started drinking and drinking and drinking and showing off and boasting. When she tried to collect, he said, it's all right, man, we have my money, we have my money. Anyway, he went on drinking and somehow very mystic. When she asked where he was, they said, I heard that very long too. And she ran after him. And when she caught him, she grabbed him, pushed her hand in every pocket, couldn't find her money. So she lifted him up and turned him upside down and slashed him. <laughs> That's the type of no nonsense person my sister was. Very dreamed of touring the world. But then, if dreams were horses, every beggar would ride back. In 2000, in the year 2000, however, when most people thought the world was coming to an end, Erin thought the opposite. Her world was just beginning. When she got the opportunity to care for her grandkids in Germany, she spent one year there, and in August 2001, she moved to the United States of America, where she took her last breath. Miss B loved life, and she lived. Death is more universal than life. Everyone dies, but not everyone lives. Miss B found an opportunity to fulfill her dreams and did a course in home care nursing. She worked in nursing homes and then went into private care. She loved what she did and she did it well. When time came for her to change her job, usually because her clients and, and they would Miss B was a very generous person. Last year when she visited, I watched her share and distribute. My sister never traveled with barriers. And this time she did. And she shared and shared and shared. And who didn't get? Didn't want. Or was not there. Very loved completeness. And when she met this tall, handsome folk of a man named Eric Wright, she knew he had completed her life. They were married on September 10, 2010. Three years ago, or thereabouts, Barry was diagnosed with a lung disorder, which developed into the dreaded cancer. Under the watchful eyes and tender care of doctors, both in Jamaica and the United States, she was well taken care of. She was a strong fighter. Whenever she we spoke and she was in pain, she would say, Mer, they are fight, man. They are fight. They are fight. She never left her job unless she was on vacation or sick leave. The daughter she never gave birth to, Therese, shared the job with her. Miss B was trying to complete one room and a bathroom in her house in Steertown. She said to me, Mer, I just want to finish one room and a bathroom that when I come, I can stay there. She was hoping to come back for her birthday in August. That is where she was going to stay. Her first born, Junior, gave her a 
trip and she should have been here for Christmas, but she decided against that to have her daughter Susie come down from Canada to spend two weeks with her and then to come over in the new year. She sent me her flight itinerary. It's 
steering him up there now to watch what is happening here and knowing that he cannot be here. But as I said to him, you have done your part. Don't beat yourself up. Grandchildren and great grandchildren. You have some grandchildren. Your grandchildren, please stand. The two numerous followers. Young people stand up. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, grandchildren and great grandchildren. A host of other relatives and friends. Beryl lived. And she lived a good life. And she knows that we miss her. But she wouldn't want us to kill ourselves because she's gone. Barry took that decision. On Barry and I would talk every morning, Monday to Friday. As I start the car to go to work, I would dial her number. And we would talk all the way from the fourth to our eyes. Then, if there is anything that we miss, we would do it during the day. And we would get on it at night again. On a Saturday morning at about 9, I would call and say, how you do? We have work to do. On a Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, you know it's church. Then after church, we would talk. In Christmas, when I was baking, I told her, because we shared just about everything. And said, I'm baking. And she said, Learn, make certain we make cake, you know. I need a whole cake. I said, Yes, ma'am. And I left the cake. She said, I need the ham too. I said, Yes, ma'am. Christmas Day, when I saw a piece of ham that Derek had popped up on the door, I said, No, ma'am. They're cutting one piece of meat, no no one leaves the berries. So I cut off a piece, and I wrap it up with a bag of berries. She loved green corns. And I went to the market and I saw some and I bought and put it in the freezer because I said, if she came and couldn't get any fresh ones, she had corn to eat. On the Thursday, the last Thursday of the year, we were chatting about plans for her coming. And she said, Lord, I'm hoping that we came in and I put it. I said, no, man, I have a plastic. I'm going to put it in and put some more wine on it so that it is just nice for you when she comes. She said, oh. And we have, we said, oh. Friday night, we spoke at length. We said greetings to each other. On Saturday morning at about 5.30, I phone around and I saw it was very calling and I answered. I said, what girl? Why were we at 5? We said, what happened? She said, I called, I called the children to carry to the hospital. I said, you're dreaming, you're crazy. She said, no. Then I didn't hear her for a little while. I said, you all right? She said, I'll catch the breaks. Right. We spoke for about another four or five minutes. And then she said, Boris a call, Boris a call, that's her son. So I figured they were at the door. Because she was still at her workplace. She was still on the job. And I said, all right, later I'll talk to you. Um, Susie kept me up to date as to what was going on. And then, maybe about midday, Susie said to me, Auntie, you can call Miss D now because she asked for pocket and her phone. I called, but I didn't get her, so I said, okay, she may be tired and resting after having fought so hard. 
Thank God this morning as we come to put more down. Amen. And I give my sympathy to the family. Amen. At this time, brothers, sisters, children, my dearest sympathy also to my wife. Amen. We bless God this morning. We worship God today. We know that God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We are going into the word of God today. First Peter chapter number one. First Peter chapter one. Let's start the reading of God's holy word. I have 30 minutes to get you in and out. The Bible is today. Verse 24 and 25. For all flesh is as brass.
is out of the oh, yes. People over here with that now. Yes, Mr. Clark, they over here with that. Yes, sir. Everybody doing their own thing. Yes. But that is yes. awaiting us. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. I can move from here yes. and let you hear again the Lord. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody.
about somebody, somebody give God praise. Death is our destination. You coming out of this life as a dead person. You're not going to live forever and ever. 70 years for one was your life. And God never to be returned. This body one day is going to fail us. Somebody praise God.
Yeah. 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 I 
Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Are you a stream? Mm -hmm. Look at everything. Yes, sir. Let us worship God. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the light. Those who are faith in me shall live, even though they die. And no one who lives and has faith in me shall never die. We live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. The Lord says, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and I am the living one. I was dead and now I am alive forevermore. And I will refuse of death and death domain. Let's just pause and sing there's a land that is fairer than they. And by faith we shall see the fire. For the father went over the way to the fear of dwelling place. Somebody then has to turn off I start to find the Careful, boss. Careful. I'm going to back up there. You Christ are your glory, 